Today I'm going to demonstrate one easy way that you can install vertical shiplap walls. What's going on? Welcome to today's video. My name is Colton and today I'm going to be demonstrating one way that you can hang a vertical shiplap wall. Now the steps that I'm going to demonstrate also apply to a horizontal shiplap wall, but instead of going from wall to wall, you're going to essentially be going from ceiling to floor. The tools that I use for this project are down below in the description, so be sure to check those out. Now the time that it took me to complete this project was probably about three or four hours. That's excluding the amount of time that I took to go to Home Depot, buy the shiplap planks, and come back. So if you wanted to make it a half day thing or even a full day thing, I would suggest doing that. And this isn't a hack on how to install shiplap wall or how to DIY a shiplap wall without using shiplap boards. I actually purchased shiplap boards and installed those as a vertical wall accent. So let's get started. Identify your space where you want to put up your shiplap wall. I'm going to install a vertical shiplap wall in this demonstration, but if you want to do a horizontal one, you could essentially do the same thing. And instead of going from wall to wall, you just go from ceiling to floor. Next, you're going to want to calculate how much square footage of shiplap you're going to need. Or you can identify the number of boards that you need by finding a board that fits the right height and then measure the width of the board and take the width of the wall divided by the width of the board. This is going to essentially tell you how many boards you need. I would also round up to the nearest whole number or if you just want square footage, measure the width and then the height. And if I'm measuring in inches, divide by 12 to convert to feet, times those two measurements together, and that's how much square footage you need. Prep your wall by taking off any light switch or outlet covers. Go to your power box and find the breaker that powers the light switch and outlets that you need off and turn them off. Double check that the power from these outlets and light switches are cut with a voltage tester. Generally how these work is if there's any sort of electricity, it will beep and blink. And I wouldn't recommend getting shocked by an outlet. You'll want to do this because when installing a shiplap wall, you want to extend the outlets so they become flush with your new wall. Remove the screws that's securing your switch and outlet. Set those off to the side. Now you got to think about how you want the shiplap to look in the end. If you have any baseboards, do you want to remove the baseboard to create a more raw look? Do you want to keep the baseboard as is and put the shiplap up against the baseboard because it may look okay or even out? Or do you want to take the baseboard off, install the shiplap, and then put the baseboard back on? You also need to consider when you start putting up the shiplap, are you okay starting with a full board width and then just however the rest of the wall is going to end up, whether that's two inches of shiplap or a full other board? Or do you want your shiplap wall perfectly center where it has the same amount of shiplap board on both ends of your wall, making it look symmetrical? I decided to put the shiplap up against the baseboard because the thickness of the shiplap and the baseboard were pretty much the same. I measure out the length of the shiplap that you need at random points of the wall to make sure that it's a consistent length and your ceiling and floor are level. This will also help with cutting because you can put the same measurement on all of your boards but I would recommend cutting just one board and then doing a dry fit to make sure that it does fit properly. Now shiplap has what's called a rabbit joint where on one side of the board you have a piece that goes over another board and then on the other side of the board is where that overlap actually comes over. Kind of like that Z shape in Tetris that can totally screw up everything or fit perfectly. I bring this up because I started on the right side of my wall so that the overlap piece of the shiplap is against the wall so when I lay my next board it's just a nice lay on top movement and this wall is put up really fast. After the dry fit I know the board fits well. I take the board, flip it over, take some liquid nails, do a nice wiggly line on the back, flip it over, put it on the wall, grab my nail gun, start at the top, and I go down every 10 to 15 inches, adding nails to the left and right side of the board. Go back to your boards and make all the cuts that you need to to finish off the rest of the wall. Assuming you need all the same height, dry fit your board to make sure it fits, flip it over, liquid nail, nail it. Do this over and over and over again until you get to where you need to make special cuts for your outlet or light switch. Now there's a lot of different ways on how you can identify where you need to cut your outlet hole. The easiest way for me is get as close to the outlet hole as I can, measure from the last shiplap board to where the edge of the outlet hole is, and then measure up from the bottom of the board to the outlet, and this will let me know the bottom corner of where the outlet needs to be cut out. Then I measure the height and the width of the outlet that needs to be cut out, draw out what needs to be cut, and then cut it. I cut it with my oscillating multi-tool. Once that's cut, dry fit it, make sure it's good, flip it over, liquid nail it, put the outlet or switch through the hole first, put it up against the wall, finish it off with nails, do it again until you get to a light switch, or any other electrical covers that may be in the way, and rinse and repeat. I decided that I was okay with cutting the last board however it landed so when I got to that point put it up drew a line all the way down cut the board put it up grab an outlet extender this essentially extends a box making it so when you put the faceplate back on it's all flush screw the faceplate back on grab some spackle or wood filler fill the holes let it dry sand it down paint it if you want to and now you're done Thank you so much for checking out today's video. If you liked what you just watched, consider subscribing and also hit that like button down below. And also if you want to see other how-to videos that I've completed in the past, go ahead and click this link right up here. If you want links to the products that I use in this video, you can also find those down below in the description. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.